We have a Rockwood 2504S, and it comes with a barbecue. Um, what I did when we got it was I thought saw it wasn't painted very good, so I went and got some high temperature paint and painted it, and then replaced the thermostat on it because it was bad. Um, it wasn't very accurate. Um, then I got it, so I found that I have this grill that I set in there. I had to cut one of the handles off to make it fit but it works good for bacon and sausage and then also on the other side it has a grill and we use it to barbecue also then here uh, what I got I put a fan here and we have power um, just to help blow the smoke out from under the awning if we have the awning set up put a paper towel rack here and it's just stuck up with a, a piece of wood I screwed the holder to and then command strips holding it and took command strips to hang the pencil and then I got a black stone here on a small table that holds out it's pretty lightweight um, on this too I made some brackets so they will slide into the barbecue bracket so I can use it on the trailer but a lot of times we use both at the same time so we have it on the table then in here this grease trap what we had was this thing was loose on this black stone so I put a little bracket back there with a magnet and that what that does we purchase this uh, fire pit from Costco it was only uh, $99 it was well worth the purchase. It has a low setting here and a high setting, and it puts out a lot of heat. So it kind of saves from hauling firewood around. Um, and then I just have a propane tank hooked up to that um, instead of connecting to the trailer propane. And then um, we purchased these wheel, wheel chocks when we got the trailer, um, and they work very well for locking the trailer in place uh, helps it from rolling then back here I made these blocks these blocks here when the scissors are all the way down the trailer will kind of rock and sway I found that when the scissors less extended what it does is it sways less um, so these blocks are just wood blocks and got in front and back the front ones are a little smaller uh, in the dimensions so they fit inside so they're stackable I have little blocks that will stack on top of here I usually stack them higher um, I found there's less sway when we do that all the lights on the trailer what I did was around here is a it's got a gasket behind it but just uh, I put some clear silicone just to prevent any moisture from getting inside uh, the trailer body. It does get inside the lens, but that's the way it is. Over here we got the these straps here to tension the the uh, overhang. I just have it hooked to the air as a spring. These things really tighten up the, the overhang a lot. There I just have it to the table. but. It really makes this thing tight for wind, so I don't have it out when the wind's really strong. But just I have it up just in case we get a gust. On the steps, we got uh, the carpet we put on there. I noticed that the, the steps were bouncing um, when we go up and down them. What happened was there was a screw that came loose up here. There wasn't, and it saw there wasn't much holding it. So what I did was I took an angle bracket and put it there, bolted to the frame and to the steps to strengthen it because they had this black bracket there and it wasn't bolted to anything. Once we did that, um, the steps became very solid, very solid. Then over here. Whenever I take the hitch off of the truck, 
um, I throw it in the back of the truck. And it was like, what, what am I gonna do with it? So I just went to Home Depot, bought this bracket here, welded the angle iron onto it, bolted it on. And so when I bolt the campsite, I just put it here. I usually cover it with a plastic bag. And then we have the equalizer hitch. So we have the pads on this. This helps control the noise. And then what I did here, I bolted a pad, a pipe on here. It's a three inch uh, sewer pipe, strapped it on. And we just store the two, the, the, uh, the arms in here when we're camping or when I'm stored at home and they're just inside there. Works pretty good. And then over the batteries, I just worry about somebody stealing them sometimes, so I just chained them down. I just hooked the chain right to here, the racket wrapped it around, and then just locked it on. Then the propane tank, what I did was I drilled here, through the bracket, where it spins, put the lock, and then just, I had the chain, so I stuck chain around it. It seems to work pretty good. Um, no one's stolen anything yet. Um, then we got, put the levelers on the corners. I got these at Camping World or somewhere. They seem to turn and not be adjust. They would just go out of level. And so what I did was, I just clear sil silicone around it keep them steady so they wouldn't move and that works pretty good we got this uh, floor mat that we use outside whenever we're in a dirty area or sandy like we're at the coast right now uh, so there's sand and um, we always put the mat down for the area and then here we got this mat um, it's a rough mat we just got it at Walmart for ten dollars and we just wipe off our shoes here to get most of this stuff off so we aren't tracking it all over and it seems to work pretty good and then when I take it home I just throw it in the back of the truck and then throw it out on the lawn and wash it all down and let it dry and pack it up for next time um, and I'm not sure if I mentioned this before uh, we stuck a fan here I just have a portable fan I just happen to have it clips on here to help blow the smoke out if I'm barbecuing and there's smoke to keep it off the awning. Uh, I got the screens here and then I put screens underneath here uh, to keep bugs out. And then up here on the front um, on this awning arm it was really strange I got really lucky because there's a plastic piece here that covers up wires and then when I woke up one morning camping and it was just on the ground and there's a piece of some silicone behind it that held it in place so I stuck some silicone and then just uh, stuck it back in place so I'm glad it didn't happen when we were on the road and we'd lose it so on the back we bought the uh, observation camera and this works out really good. I don't use it so much for backing, but I use it on the, the freeway and on the roads to see somebody following me or if I'm passing somebody on the road. Uh, it helps really good to give me an idea where I'm at. Um, then on the bumper, I did a hitch. I don't have this on here right now. Uh, it's a small platform that I set my generator on for going on a long trip. A lot of people have uh, mentioned, hey, don't bolt anything on the back because the, the tube will break off. It's not made for that. Well, I looked at it real closely. It's welded very good. Don't see any problem with it. And if I wanted to, I could beef it up. Um, but I don't see a need for that. And then we got the caps on here. We bought ones with little holes in it to keep the critters out. Um, and it comes off, it's rubber, and everything slides in there. I got generators, I, I bought a couple generators. I wish I'd actually bought two of these. This is a Win 2000 inverter generator. 
I wish I'd bought two and then the parallel kit. It's very quiet. I did a test on it um, and compared to Honda 2000 and at a campground somebody had a Honda and they said that mine was quieter so we did a decibel test and this was like one decibel less than the Honda and the eco mode and non eco mode so it seems to be working real well I paid for 29 I think for it and I like it a lot so it's a good generator I also have a I think it's a 3500 champion inverter with a key start uh, not a key start remote start it works pretty good too it's a, it's a little louder but it will run my air conditioner um, kind of wish I'd bought two of these they're lighter and they're quieter and I would have paid probably less money than uh, I did for that other champion but the champion works real well I like it One thing I'd like to mention is on the trailer, no one showed me at the dealer when we bought it. They kind of just want you to go with it, take it. Um, that this uh, vent for above the stove, you turn it on, we didn't know. Um, but there's two clips here, and this you have to unclip it for the vent to work. So you just push it in and pop it out. Um, so we went on a couple trips with it out with. Out knowing about that and I even showed a neighbor of mine that had a trailer for years and I said check it and he checked it and he says oh my gosh we've been using it for years and years and didn't even know about that so he's happy to know that you can open it up go under the trailer underneath the trailer we got um, the water fresh water storage tank what I noticed was the angle iron towards the front, this is the front of the trailer, there was a single angle iron. It was bowed down, I only traveled six miles with water in it to a campsite, and it bowed really bad. So what I've done is, I got another angle iron, purchased it, just have it sitting, I don't know if you see on top, and then I took bolts and ran them through the other side I loosened the tank moved it forward put it on and doubled up the angle iron to strengthen it um, so I try not to travel with water in it if we don't have to um, and it seems to be working pretty well since we've done that so I check I recommend people going underneath the trailer and looking uh, to see what's under there you never know what you're gonna find and also just check your wires make sure they're all strapped up real well hey one more thing going back to the tires uh, we went on a road trip down it was a uh, about 2,500 mile trip uh, about three quarters of the way through we had the original tires with the trailer they were pretty new they maybe had 1500 miles on them something like that and the we noticed that I pulled in a gas station I always check my tires and there was a actually a uh, let me fix this there was a bubble that was starting right here luckily I caught it so we switched it out with the spare and then I started reading about tires and seeing problems with tires and people mention well you know proper inflation all that you know and the, they were inflated properly there was problems with them blowing and tearing everything up underneath so I said okay uh, I'm gonna it's worth it to go with a better tire so I w went with a Goodyear endurance tire I like it I really noticed the difference in how it's uh, built it seems to be built real well um, I like it a lot so I feel safer with them and I was able to sell the old ones to somebody that just had a small little trailer they're just gonna haul around local so I sold them for a hundred dollars I think it was so it helped out these I got at America's Tire uh, they guarantee to beat everybody's price um, they install them and everything and at the time if you watch for it they have rebates that uh, are incredible so I forgot how much I paid maybe installed 300 I don't know 20 
$20 for all my tires, I think. Um, I think that's what it was. I'm not sure, but it was a good deal. Another thing we did to this barbecue was um, it came with little clips to clip it in place. These are different. The other ones are really hard to get on. And um, so you just keep the barbecue from sliding off. So this clip here actually looks like this. And it, it just slides up in there and locks. Just like a safety pin actually. I uh, bought these at uh, Home Depot, but I'm sure you can get them at any hardware store. Um, I like them a lot. Uh, they work pretty good. On this uh, little table that's next to the barbecue, I noticed that it wasn't setting level and things were kind of rolling off and at an angle. So what I did was I did this. I put a little rubber stopper on here. And I'll show you the back side what it looks like. And just you can buy it at a local hardware store and I'll screw it right into the side. And it works pretty good. And it leveled it out. So to lock this generator up, what I got is a it's just a cable thing. I bought it at Harbor Freight. And people I'm sure they can cut it, but it might detour some people and then I just came over and I lock it to the wheel but sometimes I lock it in the back of the trailer it depends on where I have my generator um, so that's what I got and Harbor Freight this is only shoot maybe ten to twelve dollars possibly and I just happen to have a lock around so I use that so we have a champion 3500 watt inverter with a remote start um, wireless remote start and yeah, it works pretty good this will run my air conditioner um, like I said before I have the winds uh, 2000 inverter generator this one's a little louder than the other one but um, so what I did was I carry it in the back of my truck and um, use this generator or my wind generator and what I did was I I decided to mount it on the back so I have a hitch then I mount it on the bumper. Like I said before, I'm real happy with the welds here, so I don't see it falling off. If it's going to, I'll do something about it. But So I bought this. It's an Apex. I looked around, and I really like the quality of it. And what it was, it was uh, like 36 inches long. I wanted it a little bit narrower, so I was able to take, drill out the pop rivets, and remove a section and made it a little smaller so I can either put the wind generator on this or this champion and um, if I decide to run it on the trailer I can but sometimes I just lift it off and put it on the ground to the side uh, pointing away from any campers so I don't disturb anybody if I can avoid it try and be friendly to other campers so I like it it works pretty good um, and then it's just really nicely installed so if you want to make room in your truck uh, I recommend you do something like this here's a clamp we use to hold our all electrical wires together hoses they just open up and they clamp shut you can buy those at Home Depot or any hardware store I use them on my lock too. They sell small ones. So here's my for under the uh, scissor jacks, and I got here's a box. I put on top like that. Then I take them apart. I got to stand on the bottom. I just made these out of plywood. They stack on each other. Like that. Like that. And then these tops. Uh, this here, this is smaller. Goes there. Gotta clean that off. Then all these. Stay this back inside. 
and I put them inside the cabinet. So here they are, ready to go in the trailer. Here's the bottoms that I have, they're all in there. And there they are, you can't see them very well, in the compartment. They just stored away all my other junk in there. And that's it. Down, at, down below the trailer you have your gray water valve and gray water tank. And your sanitation sewer uh, valve. And then here's where it all comes out. What we did is we replaced the cap. I bought this online. Um, with one where I can hook a hose to it or open the little little uh, cap here and run it into a bucket so when I'm camping and if my my gray water gets full while I'm out um, I could empty in a bucket and uh, go water a tree or go take it to the septic uh, clean out system if I'm not hooked up um, to sewer so I got that just in case because a few times we've Filled our uh, gray water tank, and I wish I had been able to empty it without opening the big old pipe so I can drain it slower. I saw this idea on uh, YouTube a while ago. Somebody had done it. They had went and bought some um, plastic PVC gutters, vinyl gutters, at um, Home Depot. They're only like $5 a piece. And then there's a joint in the middle that you can buy uh, right here. And that's probably about the same price. So I paid like $15 for this setup. Um, and what it does, it's protecting the, the um, awning from the elements, from the sun beating on it and rain. It keeps most of the rain off of it. You can see it sits pretty close right in the, the gutter of the trailer. And it keeps the sun off the awning, so I'm hoping it will help make it last a little longer so it's something easy to do you can look it up on YouTube all you do is get the pipe the, not the pipe but the gutter and cut it uh, to length of the awning and install it works pretty good I like it just don't forget to take it off when you drive because it will fly off I did it once I'm replacing my existing door lock with a keyless that I just purchased. So we'll see how this goes. Should work pretty good. So I replaced this lock with a RB keyless lock entry and it's remote control um, or you got a keypad or a key. So I'm going to do it with the fob that I have here with the lock button. The only thing is, it's kind of a loud beep. Here it is unlocking. Works pretty good. It looks just like the same as your other lock uh, setup you had prior. Here it is working. It locks the deadbolt. It doesn't lock the upper one. So that's how that works. So inside what we did was I have this, I bought this at uh, Harbor Freight sells them now for like $3.50 or Ace Supply I think it is. Um, so when I come to my door, I have a light switch, just hit it, hit it on and it lights up in here until I can see what I'm doing. Um, then in here we have the Murphy bed and I have up here shelves that I just built. Um, posted them before for people to see then I have over here my panel can't see it very good so I have a, a light that I just put up above here so I could see it makes a little better um, then what do I got here so the TV that we had originally came with the trailer was like a 24 inch so we bought like a 30 which is the biggest we could get in here the other one is a little bit too small and then the little one we just keep and then we put it outside when we want to use it um, on the side of the rockwood. Um, to run the TV when we're boondocking off the battery, we have a inverter here. It's only 500 watt. It's a Black & Decker from Home Depot. Not expensive. It runs the TV no problem. And that's all I wanted to run. 
have the wires running up down under the trailer up to the battery and then I have a plug here it comes off and then it goes up behind the TV here I put one of the lights here and it's plugged into the power here for electricity and then here is the power strip for the inverter so it's kind of nice I can just unplug it from the power to here and then uh, if I'm running my generator I leave it plugged in here and I have the light switch and then here down below you have this here it, you turn it on and then you can turn the antenna and it tells uh, when you turn your antenna as the blue lights increase it shows that you have good signal strength so you, you know where you have your best signal strength for the TV you got that at Camping World and it just runs up I mounted it down here Something else we did, we have uh, off the smart TV, the USB cord that comes off. We hooked this to a portable hard drive that we have a bunch of movies downloaded on it. And so we were able to watch movies. Then uh, put a clock up here. It's a little bigger than I wanted, but it's kind of nice. We can see it from anywhere in the trailer except the bathroom. Um, then what we got here, a microwave storage and then here what I did for the dishes I put this shells in it just corner wood corner wood with some hang shells glued and um, with no slip stuff here and it works pretty good and then just slid it in for my coffee cups I just took put these here and back there so the cups don't move around towel rack just hooked it to the side of the vent uh, for the stove. Um, down here, underneath the oven, what I did was I took a bunch of, we had a bunch of plywood in there. There was limited room, I saw here. So what I did, I just um, opened it up, just put plywood on the bottom here, and then some sides, and I was able to move it so we get a lot more pots and pans in there. It seems to help quite a bit. Then the intake here for the heater, to muffle the sound on the heater, what I did was I took some stiff board, you can't really see it, and uh, insulated around the heater, left a lot of room around the heater, and then put in front here, it's like a baffle, and then the air goes around and out. I checked the instruction manual on how many square inches it needs for the intake of the heater and I figured it out and I have plenty of intake room. This quiets down the heater pretty good. And then up at the sink put a soap dispenser. I did that right after we got it pretty much instead of having something sitting on the counter. And then underneath we got the there's a Soap dispenser with all the soap in it, liquid soap. And then down here, customize the shelves a little bit, gave more room. And it also helped me add support, as you can see, to this this shelf right here, because it was sagging. So this, by having a board go up in the back, it helps support it quite a bit. And then in here, these are the cabinets that are next to the uh, refrigerator. I want to have more space here in the shelves rather than just openings. So I just got these glides, Home Depot. And you can stack stuff here and here. And we got just some spices. And my wife wanted it open in the front here more so she had tall things. She can use that. And they were pretty good. These are uh, self-closing, so they stay. Left the bottom one open uh, a little bit here, so no, no upper area. Down below, I took some... On the back side, it was kind of limited space. And I took this backboard out, and there was nothing really behind it. So I was able to make it bigger room, so we just have towels in there. It gave some more room. And then, 
then what we do is we install the thermostat household thermostat a lot better it's digital the other one that came with it you might set it at a temperature you don't really know what it is um, and then it uh, it might vary five ten degrees so this one's nice because it you set it at a certain temperature hot or cold and it stays there within one or two degrees and then going to the bathroom I didn't want to put any holes in the cabinets or anything so for the toilet paper roll so I just took a piece of wood varnished it up screwed this on and have it on here with uh, command strips works pretty good and since I'm tall and I can't see my face really through the mirror did this got this at Bed Bath and Beyond just put a command strip hanger there so I'm able to stand and look into it it works pretty good we live in California it's we don't really get any snow here where we're at we can camp year round so we're pretty fortunate but we go camping at the coast a lot um, so we might run into some humidity in the winter months more so uh, sometimes in the winter I just come out I have a dehumidifier here and we bought it online Amazon it's have the dry and just run it and then it fills up and I just keep an eye on it and dump it out so I can run it a couple days and maybe get a cup of water um, it's pretty quiet it's not too loud it just sounds like a heater in a way so our humidity is not very high here so I don't worry about it too much I only run it after we come camping from the coast uh, to kind of get moisture out of the air so there's storage here, under here, in this cabinet here. Sometimes in these trailers it can be kind of dark and I can't see things very well. So um, just put these slip lights, got these at True Value Hardware, Ace Hardware. And they put out quite a bit of light in there. I like them. So I got one on each shelf. It's pretty handy though. So we have the Murphy bed. And we have this curtain that we put up. Uh, we close at night to keep it dark in here so when the sun comes up. Um, before, it was screwed to the side here. And then we would take and pull it shut. Right? Pull it shut. And then this side was screwed to the wall. So if I want to get out of the bed from this side, I'd have to walk across the bed to get out and go out that side. So what we did, we just unscrewed it and can go this way. Works pretty good. Then we like to have it real dark in the mornings. So you have the, the blinds that pull down, right? And then the curtains, but it doesn't keep out all the darkness. So what we got is I just cut out some, it's called, it's like insulating foil behind here. Cut squares, just like that just slides in there and blocks out any light from coming through we really like it we could use it on another windows too um, then I have a, a cover that goes over this you buy those that go over vents for insulation and it keeps out light too so it helps us sleep in in the mornings so in the bathroom um, we got my wife put these up here they just come in and go in and out and we, they're just those uh, little curtain rods you buy for little, little smaller windows. We hang our towels up here to dry underneath the skylight, and it works pretty good. I take them out when I shower. And we uh, replace the original shower head with one of these everybody was talking about. Puts out more oxygen and uh, less water, so we don't fill our tank so quick. And it seems to work pretty good. We were able to use the same. Uh, brackets with it on these two when I noticed uh, this one was coming loose so what I did was I unscrewed it all saw there's no caulking behind it so I put clear caulking uh, silicone behind it and rescrewed it to the wall same with this put silicone behind it screwed it to the wall so it'd be watertight 
I didn't want any water going down the inside of the wall. So I think everybody is kind of running into the problem of the smoke alarm going off when you're cooking. We usually open up a window and, and open some vents and turn the fan on in the bathroom to draw it across. And uh, so what my wife did was uh, she got one of these. Let's see if I can put it on. And it comes with smoke alarms when you buy them. And it, she just covers it up and it's red so we see it. And then when she's done cooking and we just take it off and it keeps the smoke alarm from going off. Then we got here on the stove, we bought one of these covers that I think we get got it at Camping World. Just kind of protect the surface of the metal so we don't get it all messed up and then you can wash this if you want. It's right at what it says. So in the microwave, I think everybody's ran into this when you drive down the road, um, this plate will bounce all over and then my wife's shorter she can't really see it to put it back on the, the gear so I just took one of these foam um, noodles and cut it down I put a piece of wood in it to stiffen it up a little bit um, cut it played with it a little bit put it in there and I just wedge it in there and it holds it in place while we drive works pretty good on the door we bought one of these handles, they're pretty cheap. Uh, you can get them online or Camping World. It's just a handle, screws on your screen. It's pretty simple. And I found that's pretty good. It's, it really helps in opening and closing this thing uh, a lot. So I even closed the door with it. Works pretty good, really strong. Haven't had a problem yet. It has screws that are pretty solid. Um, I've seen some people pop rivet them on. So if those screws come out, I'll probably end up pop riveting them. Yeah. Well, we have a Murphy bed, and what we got is, I think a lot of people have mentioned it. Uh, there's a space back here, and I've had a problem. There's a gap behind the bed, and some people lose their pillows back there or other things. And um, so this is a short queen bed. And I'm 6'3", maybe almost 6'4". And so the bed's kind of short for me. Um, so what I found was um, we added, we wanted to add something back there that we could take in and out. I came up with something, I posted it before. Um, it's, I could have made it a lot easier probably, but um, at the time, this is what I came up with. Um, let's see what I got here. So what I do is I store this behind the couch. It looks like this. And uh, this is actually, there's a foam pad under here. And it's, I think it's three inches of foam. This slides over the edge of the bed. I'll put it on in a minute. Um, and take it in and out. I'm thinking about buying a wedge. It might be easier to carry around. I've seen people um, post those and found one on Amazon. I think they're around $30, $40. So, um, or I'll just stick with this. So I'm going to put it in place. So I'll be right back. So I have it in place now. Um, what it did, I just slid it over. There's a board there. And I just have the cutouts for the straps. And there's a bracket in the middle. It sits in there, and then uh, I had to pull the bed out a little bit, and then I push it back, and it just adds length to the bed, and it's almost like a full-size queen for me, and I fit on it, um, and it works pretty good. And then when we lift the bed up, I take it out. A lot of times when we go camping, sometimes we just leave the bed down if it's only for a few days. And um, so I like it. It just involves um, climbing on the bed and putting it in. It takes a few minutes. The bed that came with the trailer was a, I think it's just a foam mattress. is heated and um, it just didn't, uh, it wasn't comfortable. I we slept on the first night. We ended up going into town. 
I'm buying a, at Costco one of those three inch gel foam covers for it, but it didn't work. What I found was like late at night, early morning, all of a sudden you felt like you're sinking all the way into the, the board that's below the mattress and not comfortable. So we found another one. We were able to sell the old one. We didn't use it very much. Online, I think we got $100 for it, which wasn't a bad deal. So what we came up with was this other mattress. Um, looked online, researched. I see they, they don't sell them anymore in a queen, uh, short queen, but they do full queen. But they have other ones that are similar. This mattress is a, I think it's a 10-inch mattress. And that's about all you can really get in to fold it up into the wall. I don't think you can get any thicker than that. But it's a perfect cloud. It's a real comfortable mattress. Um, it's like a memory foam foam. And it, it just uh, works really well. I sleep on this better than my house mattress. And I like it. So if you're looking for a mattress, just search online and read reviews, and that's all you can do. We don't have very good luck with mattresses, but we did on this one. We have the Suburban Stove Oven Combo, and uh, it runs on propane. And propane ovens uh, take a while to heat up, so if you're using one at these and you've used it, uh, you know it takes longer than a gas, natural gas stove. Uh, my wife, what she did was, um, she went in to cook uh, like biscuits once and some other things and she found that the, it was really hard to cook the bottom, and the bottom of the pan gets hot and it would burn whatever she's cooking. And um, so what she did was, she just got these, I think they're like cooking tiles or something. There's two of them. They fit in there. And it, it's been working. She's been cooking biscuits and um, french fries, lasagna. And then it really helps. Um, no more burning of the stuff. So something to think about. And then we got a thermometer she got for the inside so she could see the temperature. Because a lot of times these aren't really accurate. It tells you the, the temperatures on it, but you can't always believe it. So, anyway, that's a, an idea you might think about doing if you have problems with things burning in your oven. To help darken things up at night um, with this trailer, you have your window and the door, and a lot of light comes in it uh, at night, so um, we want to have it darker. Uh, so my wife just took a fabric... It has a black uh, backside on it, and it's almost like a leather, fake leather. What she did is put some um, command strip Velcro on there, on the door, and then you can take this thing on and off. So it just peels right off. There's the command strip, and then she has the Velcro here. So on the backside, it's black. Helps darken it up quite a bit. Just put it up. And it's up. It, it's helped quite a bit. Uh, above the Murphy bed, we got um, two lights. And then there's a light switch that is located underneath the counter for one person to operate on one side of the bed if you have two people in bed. And um, so if both lights are off, then a lot darker so a person asleep on this bed has no control of the switch unless they reach up for the light which is out of reaching distance so we just have some puck lights that we put under here help light up on each side of the bed and uh, so we don't disturb each other and, and um, what we got also what I did was I saw online on the mini light site uh, Facebook page these rubber pads that somebody said they put on I really like those so ordered them online they come in a pack of four I've used two of them for each side uh, we have one on each side I was just waiting for my head to hit on the corner and 
and that wouldn't be very funny. So I thought, I'm going to get those and maybe save my head. And so far, I still I haven't hit them yet, but someday I will. It's a good investment.